Thank you for joining. Um, if you watched our previous video, the one channeling Cyril Collard, you might remember that there was another spirit that was interested on being channeled that time and I told him that I wasn't ready for it. Um, now it's his time. In fact, he's been wanting me to channel him maybe for a couple of years um, and I always hesitated uh, for different reasons um, the most important one I think it's because of the expectations that are surrounding the kind of uh, channelings others are doing um, about him or with him and <clears throat> I, it was difficult for me because it was so different from the information I was getting from him um, and it's I'm I'm going to repeat myself a bit because this is pretty similar what happened um, with my experience channeling Kurt Cobain. If you watch that video, that channeling, um, I, I talk about um, different channelers getting different information from the same spirit. Some may say, well, the, the channeler must be wrong the channeler is filtering information or is channeling another spirit, a trick, tricky spirit and so on. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I think most of the time the case is different. Um, and I want to be very clear that whatever um, he shares, the spirit shares through me. I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm not saying that's the ultimate truth. Truth, And I repeat that on the disclaimer too. Um, it's not about if the message is based on something uh, tangible, something that actually happened in this timeline is about if the message is really um, is inspiring you uh, in a in a way. So for me, it's not that the channeler is right and other is wrong, but they are addressing to different um, to different groups of people that have different purposes and are working with different kind of memories. So going back again to the example of Kurt Cobain. Um, it's not inspiring for me um, believing that he was a murderer or he was um, a victim of a conspiracy um, it's not what I get from him it's not what I feel from him and that doesn't mean that that was that didn't happen that way it's just I can only talk about my experience and my experience with the spirits I can I can make it up um, What, what inspires me, or better say, the way I can relate with him is understanding he was a person that suffered from mental, mental illness. Um, I can relate with that and I can find inspiration uh, in his art, his music coming from that base, that he was a person dealing with very deep trauma and he was able to share that through his art.
and that's very similar to what happens with me with this spirit we are talking about that is Chris Cornell I know there is a lot of people and channelers that share about um, him being murdered whether there was a conspiracy behind or it was um, <clears throat> a more personal thing going on um, it's it's <laughs> I remember when whenever he would pop up and he would ask, ask me to channel him I would say <clears throat> why there is already many channelers uh, doing that working with you um, and <laughs> what I get from you is very different from what they get from you and whenever I would ask him what's the truth um, he would share this with me this deep hurt taste black hole inside of him that never faded sometimes it um, it was calmer but it was always there so okay um, as always I'm gonna share about my personal connection with Chris mm. so in the video <laughs> sorry that I'm always linking to other videos it's not to make you watch those videos if you haven't <laughs> um, it's just uh, memories popping up and when I was talking about my connection with Scott White and I would say that when I was young I was not into rock music I was into classic uh, classical music and tangos too um, vintage music like from the 50s and the 60s that was my <laughs> kind of thing um, um, and even when I knew about Nirvana about Stuntable Pilots about uh, some garden of course I was not living under a rock um, it was not music that would uh, talk to me um, but I remember seeing Chris in the video for Schoolman, I think, and it really, uh, it was like recorded in my mind for some reason, I, I couldn't explain it. And I remember very well the, the fork necklace. There is a story behind that for Nicholas. Um, um, just very recently, months ago, I, I realized that Nicholas was made by Andrew. Um, oh my god, again, now I'm forgetting your name. That's very weird. And in blank. Anyway, that's another story. You can look for it. <sighs> it's almost like he doesn't want me to mention him. Um, anyway, so I knew that. I knew Chris, but I was not into the music. Uh, so then again talking about another video channeling Jeff Buckley I talk about how I knew his music when I was 13 14 years old and I was absolutely crazy about him about his music and I was just obsessed with the guy um, and I was obsessed with everything about about Jeff like I would buy 
albums from artists just because I knew they wrote a song about him. And that happened with Chris. I, I knew that he made a Euphoria Morning uh, inspired on Jeff. And even a song was uh, dedicated to him. So I got the album and then I love it. I remember um, listening, listening to it, singing with him over and over. I think it was the summer 2000, 2001. I'm not sure. The album was fresh. <laughs> so we can look for the date. <laughs> and and yeah, and I remember seeing the video of him with his new look, that short hair, short, straight hair. Um, and I remember, I think a couple of years later, I'm not sure, I remember reading an interview um, with him and don't remember exactly what the interview interviewer was asking, but Chris said that he had this tradition of um, all in the hotel rooms he would go. Um, he would go to the window and see, imagine jumping in the window. And I had this. I remember I had this sinking sensation, feeling that someday he would do it. He would actually do it. <laughs> so years went by. I I stopped listening to Euphoria Morning for years. Um, just like I stopped listening to Buckley music for a couple of years. And I remember I was one day walking to the grocery store and I was listening. Um, I think I got some garden songs and then I got Chris Cornell songs and and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he's still alive. He's 50 and he's still alive. And I was just so grateful that we didn't uh, lose him to suicide and that we still had his voice stronger than ever. And two weeks later, my husband comes to the bedroom early in the morning and he says, you know what? Chris Cornell died. <sighs> And, and and since that moment, I, I was I was listening his songs and thinking about how the blessing for having Chris' voice in this world. I I didn't stop listening his music for those for those couple of weeks. So it was very weird um, to know about his about his death. It felt very personal. And I know millions of people feel the same way, and I can understand that completely. Um, even when I was not a fan of his music, and I think a week later, I think five days later, I saw him in my dreams. Um, he was singing Ave Maria. He was singing Ave Maria and when and, and for a group of people, it, it was a group of people, in fact it was a group of wild ones from all different eras, musicians, actors, um, artists, and when he stopped singing, he got into this corner alone and I was worried I was a bit worried about him and I went towards him and I asked him how he was doing he was smoking 
And he said, I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, there was this deep sorrow in his eyes. Uh. <clears throat> And he would pop up here and there, usually very quiet. Um, he would come to different channelers and I, I wouldn't watch it, I, but from other people I would get what they were saying about him, the circumstance of his death and so on. And I would ask him, as I said, uh, and, and he will always share the same thing. Uh, I did it. Um, yeah. I talk so much. Sorry. So, um, there was also someone else, some other spirit that want, I was popping up, it wasn't my awareness, and then, I don't know, like the next day, someone commented on uh, another video saying if I would ever interview Ian Corte. Because it was him. If you don't know him, he was the leader of your division. And well, my connection with him is very brave. I, when I was a teenager, um, yeah, I said that I was not into rock music. Well, until I met Jeff Buckley. I met Jeff Buckley music. Um, well, in decades, decades later, I would, I would understand that Jeff was guiding me towards certain music and he was, I, I see him as my musical guide. He's the one that sends me stuff, um, new music, old music to check it out. Um, so yeah, he sent me Joe Division and I was obsessed with the album Coaster. I was insanely <laughs> obsessed um, with that album and I watched this new movie about the... I can't remember the name and I don't have anything here to check it out. Um, I, I will leave it on the, on the description. And a movie about the new wave uh, movement and Ian Cortez appears there. And I remember watching, I would go to these midnight sessions, movie sessions, in an old movie theater. And I remember feeling him so vividly. I had no idea then that I was indeed channeling the spirit, that it was, I was able to connect with them in that way. I could feel his hamshati and all that. <clears throat> so a couple of years ago he started popping up here and there but he's very very quiet I really don't know if I can say anything about him so I really don't know why <laughs> why he was popping up like like for a channeling and then I realized that they share Chris and Ian Chris Cornell and Ian Cortez they share their death anniversary and sadly they shared their cause of death Ian had himself <coughs> mm. okay so this has been a very long introduction already and I don't have much daylight I don't know if Ian really wants to talk. 
or if you just want it to, to let himself know, oh no, really. But we'll see what Chris has to say. What is what you want to say? <laughs> Finally. Mm. Sometimes he pops up in dreams and he's very mischievous. Why like, it annoys me. And that's another reason my <laughs> my dynamic with him is kind of oh, this guy. <laughs> I don't go well with cancer people. Um yeah. I have to I have to clean up that because they get on my nerves, I could say. I love them, but at the same time I want them to stay away. Sorry. Okay. I I don't think I have ever said this, but sometimes people hear noise noises in the videos and they think it's a spirit. It's probably my husband or my kid. <laughs> They're watching TV or they are playing. So yeah, probably it's the spirit confirmation. Are you ready? He's saying, are you ready? <sighs> okay. Oh no. Well, she already said enough. I don't think I have much to add. So, um, one thing I would like to explain, and I'm not really... I don't have a, a master's degree on this shit um, but it's just something that I have witnessed working with different psychics and mediums and all of that uh, depending on your journey depending on the the place you are you will connect with different aspects of a spirit and it's a bit of what she said that it will serve a specific purpose depending on the specific person it's a bit like everybody's in different places you know they, they have different perspective of the same spirit and and they will get different things from them, depending on the place they are, and the place of, let's say, awareness, the place of uh, consciousness, how conscious they are of their own, of their own shadows, of their own traumas, of, so they they do not project that on that on us, and how they can deal with our own projection, because yes, a spirit we project stuff. It's not like we are free of, of all the baggage. No, not at all. Um, especially for people like me that we deal with addiction all our lives. Um, it doesn't have to be about drugs. It, 
I mean, it's not about drugs, really. Um, but we avoid so much stuff. It's almost like a pressure pot. Um, and with death, just... There's some people that believe that because we don't have a body, then we are healed. But in fact, not having a body might make things a bit harder. Because it's like everything's... Um, there's no order, there is no, there is a chaos everywhere, a chaos of memories, a chaos of traumas, just... Uh, and it's not exactly that we don't have a body anymore. Of course, we don't have meat, we don't have blood, we don't have that kind of flesh, but we do have a body, an energetic body. And an energetic body is like, you get a scar on your physical body, and that scar will, will also trespass to the energetic body. It will leave energetic scar too. And the same with psychological trauma, you know. Uh, like something that hurt you very deeply. You were knocked out by this, by this event, by this situation, this problem. Um, then if, if we don't address this on the, on the physical, when we are in the physical, it will be much harder to deal with that on the spiritual. Yeah, I want to say that. Uh, so it's not like I'm lying to you or anybody of us. We don't, it's not our intention. We, it's not like we're keeping things from you. I mean, we share what we know. And we don't know, we don't know everything. It's that simple. It's very, very simple indeed. Um, when I was a musician and I was uh, this rock star and people would see me like this, I don't know, this rock god, you know, and that would piss me off. Because I was just, I was very regular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. Um... And I wanted regular stuff. I wanted a conventional life, indeed. And, and I felt a lot like the media, the fans were taking that away from me, that possibility of having a conventional life because I had to fit certain standards, the rock star standards. Obviously, nobody was stealing anything from me. Um, it was my bullshit excuse <laughs> yeah i was kind of lost yeah i tend to lost my thoughts um So, we talk about mental illness, and really there is only one illness that it manifests in all the different bodies. Um, so it's not like there is a specific group of... of the world that suffers mental illness um, is that we all suffer illness in different degrees. So everybody has a degree of mental illness, we could say. It's like this a spectrum of illness. And there is, I don't know, you could. You, you could uh, name them with one hand, I think. Those are, are completely healthy. Mm. And it's because there's, there's so much to address. Uh, 
we may see only the the dead leaf, you know, the dry leaf of the tree, um, but but the rotten the rotten roots are going. thousand feet under I I wasn't there to advise anything to anybody I think everybody does their best at any moment, their best of their capacities, or from what they learned from their families, from their environment. Um, there is a point when you have to work harder, I think. But still that comes from a place where you learn to be responsible. Hey. I, I can't say that I learned that and I can safely say that I'm still learning it is very easy for me to escape into music I still do that <clears throat> and pleasures and yeah. I never mean to do harm to anybody. Uh, and eh, I know, I know how it sounds. Any addict will say the same. We don't want to hurt anybody. It's just that we are hurting ourselves. Um, takes it takes a lot of courage um, to be able to to get out from the same box you put yourself And the box of I need medical help. Um, I need medicines. I mean, we all need medicines of some kind, mm. but some are just very short effect. And those are the easy ones. The, the the other path, we don't want to take it because we don't want to transform our lives. We don't want to transform ourselves. You get used to this image you have of yourself. And it's very difficult to walk away from that. I should say it was difficult for me talking very general here <laughs> like I'm just I'm serving stuff yeah mm. so it's funny because I, I've been I've been waiting for this to happen to to talk through this specific channel and now I'm a bit lost about what I really want to say I want to say I love you.
you're watching this, if you're taking the time to watch this, thank you. And if you have watched other channelers and and you took the time also to, to get that message, thank you. One of the things that can happen, <clears throat> as I said, you can connect with different aspects of the same spirit and people, especially ungrounded people, might connect with different timelines. Uh, yeah, let's not forget that channelers might actually just hear what they want to hear. And they will twist your words. It's a bit like in this world. I would say something in an interview, and the interviewer will uh, hear something very different. Or in a concert, you're having a good time. You're doing your music. You're doing your thing, and some. Someone gets really upset and thinks you're being unrespectful or you're not giving your best. And you're just tired, I don't know. We are always misunderstanding each other. So, as she said, uh, about messages you, you take what what it helps you what it supports you in your journey if you have any key feelings if, if, if you watch a channeler or a life coach or or music a musician anything and, and you don't feel um, empowered you, you feel drained you feel you feel in a worse place, <laughs> then why you keep listening? And if the message really hits you, really moves you, and so so take that and. make it make it real what i mean is we we're not just sharing because we want to to let it out just the same that with music it was not just because i want to express myself i i also wanted to move people and when we say move it, it's supposed to, something happens later. You feel inspired to do something. Maybe you reach a friend that's having a bad time. People don't call each other these days, right? And that, that thing, that old school thing was really, really cool. And someone really listening to you. actually listening people think about their depressed depressed friends or bipolar or anything and they think what can I do how can I help and actually just listening and being really there it helps a lot without them without you wanting them to change or getting upset about their choices, their bad choices. I mean, you can get upset, obviously, but just don't throw that into them. So if you're if you're watching this, 
Where if you listen to my albums these days, and and you feel sorrow, and, and I understand that, and and I thank you if you cry about me. It's a weird thing, but I appreciate it. As spirits, we appreciate it. Those tears, they are physical evidence that our life was not wasted, not even our biological deaths. So, what can you do with that pain? Maybe you reach to someone and ask them how are they doing, what can you do to make them feel better, let's hang out, maybe you are struggling, reach out for people and you will be surprised. You, you deserve support. Or maybe you are not in that place yet of sharing. How you really feel. And I can understand that, that you feel you can take that mask out. Write it down. Be real. Be radically honest. It's you and blank page. What's going to happen? I'm not going to do anything to you. I know it it's it's really really weird when you when you write down exactly your thoughts, your intrusive thoughts But then you can see them for what they are. These things, they do not they do not really belong to you. People usually talk about clouds and it's indeed a very good metaphor because they come and go and they are not really part of you they are part of the landscape right? they are not they do not make up your essence to say it in other words and one last thing It was very hard for me to talk about how I really felt because of the judgment people would not always say right in my face people feel it I could feel it and I feel it even now there's a lot of people saying that there is no way I could have killed myself and do that to my kids. <laughs> like if people were commit suicide how we are doing a crime against our family. Like, it, like it's an act of violence against our family. It is an act of violence against ourselves and yeah it have horrible consequence for all families even for 
your future ancestors and I don't know what else we can we can go in a kind of a rabbit hole there but to think I was murdered in a conspiracy that idea is better, sounds better for you, just because you can phantom the image of me taking my own life and leaving my children. Being that selfish, you think I'm that selfish? You think suicide people are selfish? We go through this awful pain every day of our lives if I was able to make it till 50 it was because of my children because of my family and I never would have wanted to cause them pain but I just And there is this another thing sometimes happens with the spirits specifically with suicide it happens in an altered state of consciousness it's not a rational choice nobody will do it in the right frame of mind you have to be in a very awful place to take that kind of decision because it goes everything. It goes against every biological law. We are meant to survive. Our bodies want to survive. Our spirits, our soul wants to go on. <clears throat> our spirit came into the, this physical vessel to have this human experience in the thing that do you willingly want to to end it? When you think about that, when you have suicidal thoughts, it's because you are so not in alignment with yourself. Like you cannot think straight. So there is this altered state of consciousness, heightened it many times by drugs and alcohol. And that happens. And then the spirit can really accept what they did. And that can produce some ideas. Again, that are not really yours. You can, it's almost like you attract these ideas of suffering an accident or an overdose or I'm being murdered. So some spirits will actually say it, that no, it wasn't suicide because they cannot, they even then cannot accept it. And it's very hard when there is people judging you, even in the afterlife. You can see, yeah, go watch. <laughs> go watch some of my fellows. <laughs> that took their own lives and then watch the comments under their YouTube videos and you will see, yeah, but he was a loser, he killed himself, he was a fucking junkie and he didn't care about his family, he took his life. Yeah, I think that was all. Then be kind. <laughs> it's funny, right? Everybody says that, but what it really means, it means that you open your heart and you open your mind and you accept differences. You accept other experiences that are not your own. that might contradict your ideas, that might contradict your beliefs, that might contradict what you learned, what you were taught 
your tradition, your system, your society. And you might not love it, but you accept it. You, you give them the right to be. That's, I think that's the reason we are here together. Can you accept me as I am and can you accept yourself as you are? I wish you to. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, great. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. I'm not, I'm not sure yet if Ian wants to add something or he wants uh, no I don't think he wants an, a video specifically for him <laughs> he's, I think he's too shy for that and and, and he wants um, like stay behind Chris a bit. Okay, he doesn't want me to channel him, but he wants to deliver a message. I'm in peace now. I love my life. Having a body was difficult. I was in a lot of pain, physical, emotional. Um, I'm not sure about his diagnosis, but he seems um, a bit autistic. I, I would say that he probably was in the autistic spectrum undiagnosed it and he has some OCD issues um, yeah I think he was um, then <laughs> I can't relate with you um, he had uh, OCD he was not like I wanted everything to be clean. <laughs> um, he was like, do people really love me? Do people really like me? Do, are people with me because they really love me? Or just because uh, they want something from me? Uh, or just because it happened? I mean, they, they met me and they are... Um, like he was constantly uh, questioning. Uh, friendships, relationships, um, uh, even in the musical success, the, the re people really like my music, or it's just because it's the only thing uh, playing right now at <laughs> the radio station. Uh, and he could never, he could never let go of those thoughts, and it was extremely stressful, nightmares about it. Um, Night and he, he, I, I think he felt that like he wasn't real, like he wasn't himself, like he was playing to be someone else. Like that. 
like he was a joke. I was a joke of myself, uh, a cartoon of myself. I, I didn't know how to be, just how to be. And I thought there was something inherently wrong with me since I was conscious. And I hanged myself. Because I wanted to, to stop. I wanted my thoughts to go away. In when you get to that point, you don't think. I mean, you actually think people would be relieved that you are gone. It's not true. When you are in a quiet place but when you are in that place with all of those thoughts bubbling in your mind it it seems right it seems like yeah it's going to be a relief for them it, he's talking about his case he's not talking about Chris I thought it, it was going to be a relief for everybody not having to deal with me and my my illness He immediately realized he was wrong, but he, he was still shocked about how people mourned him. And he's even sh sh more shocked <laughs> that people still listen to his music and he's very proud of his music. And he would like more people to listen to it. He thinks his music is um, a very strong medicine for specific people. It was for me. I'm talking about myself. And when I was listening to Joy Division, I was going through a very severe depression, an eating disorder. And, and I felt like Ian really could understand what I was going through. So if you haven't listened to Joy Division, I highly recommend it. And he wants to say thank you to that person that commented on a video asking about him. He says, there's a part of me, the sweetest part of me is with my daughter always. Because that is what she needs. That's what she would have had if, if I didn't take my life. He would have experienced the sweeter part of, of me. So there is this Ian with wings uh, always around her. Okay, thank you, thank you Ian, thank you Chris, I'm very tired right now, um, yeah, I think there's nothing else to share. Uh, thank you for watching, for listening. Um, I'm a bit worried about the comments. 
Um, but I, I have, I have to, to do this, um, and I wish you find uh, really inspiration in this, in this channel. Thank you, and peace be with you.